Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special event for Cubing at Home 3. Can you fool Stanley Chapel? So here's how this is going to work. I'm joined here with Stanley Chapel, the one and only. You want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you know him. You know him all too well. Um, but he's here. And so what many of you know about him is that Stanley is a great cuber. But what many of you may not know about him is that Stanley also knows just about everything there is to know about cubing and about the WCA. So um, what we've done is I have contacted 10 of your favorite cubers and you cubers who you, who you know who you know and love, and they have come up with their best attempts at fooling Stanley Chapel and seeing if he will be able to answer these WCA trivia questions. So we're going to go in order from easiest to hardest. So hopefully in the beginning, you guys will be able to play along too in the chat and maybe guess your answers as well. Uh, Stanley, I'm going to ask that you don't look at the chat for that reason. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start this off with a bang. Our first clue reader is going to be Felix Zemdegs. Uh, so Felix, take it away. Hi, Stanley. Um, my question for the trivia is how many times have I placed third in the 3x3 finals in an official WCA competition? Once, twice, thrice, or uh, four times? Okay, Stanley, I sense it. How many times has he placed third in finals of a WCA competition? So Yeah, and we're, what, we're back now, so it's the okay. two of us. Yeah. yeah. Which Okay, I'm trying to think of which ones I know about. So... Worlds 2011, I'm pretty sure he placed third there. So there's the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of others that I know about. Like, I don't feel confident in making a guess on this one because, you know, it's like this is the kind of question that's like surprisingly difficult with, um, mm. with the knowledge that I have. Um, like, because it requires me to pull from different sources rather than. Um, I'm trying to think about <sighs> I may have to just like straight up guess on this one. I'm going to guess wow. I'm going to estimate that he has placed third one other time and say B2 final answer. Two is your final answer. Yeah. All right. Um I'm sorry to say it's actually one. Mm. Felix Zemdex has only placed third one time in three uh, by three finals of a WCA competition. And you're right, it was at uh Worlds 2011. Yeah, he's but... beaten by Mikhail Pluskovich and Ro Hessler. Um, Correct. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, very close on that one. You had the you had the right intuition, but I guess you just yeah. overestimated there. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, you're so far you're so far over one, but hopefully you're able to get some of these next ones. We'll see <laughs> yeah. how it goes. Um, but Felix did fool you, so congrats to yeah. Felix. Um, our next reader is the one and only Chris Tran. Uh, so we're gonna turn it over to Chris. Who was the first person to get the first official sub ten single? Was it A. Jean Pons? B, Edouard Chambon, C, Ron Van Bruken, or D, Thibault Jacquinot? Okay, so there's the question, Stanley. Oh, okay, this one I know off the top of my head. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, it is D, I will not attempt to pronounce his name right now because I will get it horribly <laughs> wrong, but he got the first sub 10 with 9.86, and I believe the year was 2007, but I can't say the competition for certain. For that, I'm going to guess it was Mercia Open 2007, which is in Spain. He's a French cuber. Kind of makes sense, but who knows? But D is my <laughs> final answer. Wow. Um, it was, um, you are correct. It was him. It was in 2007 at the Spanish Open 2007. Oh, so not okay. quite. <laughs> was, it, was, it in, was it in Mercia or was Spanish Open in a different place? Um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> And there you go. Um, so that's that's Stanley Chapel for you. Um, yeah, that's our second question from Chris Tran. So you're one for two now. Pretty solid. Okay. Um, good job. Good job. Um, and moving on to our third question. This one comes from the one and only Sean Bouquet from SpeedCubeReview.com. Um, so yeah, we're going to pass it over to Sean. Hey, Sean here from SpeedCubeReview.com. Stanley Chapel, I have a question for you. What place did Lars Petrus come in in the 1982 World Championship? Was it third, fourth, sixth, or tenth? Okay, so there's what your place question. did Lars Petrus come in 1982 Worlds? So I can rule out A for certain because I know he didn't podium because the podium was Mintai, Guse Razu Schultz, and Zoltan Labas. Um, I am pretty sure he came fourth. I'm pretty sure the rest of the top six in is 
Actually, I don't know who else was in top six. I don't think Kenny Chiueno, the Asian record holder from that competition, was in top six. But I believe, uh, I believe um, Jerome Jean Charles was also part of that group. But I wouldn't be able to say who the other one is. I'm going to say B fourth final answer. Fourth is correct, and okay. um, you were uh, you Kenichi actually did get fifth. The Asian the Asian oh, record okay. holder he mentioned. Um, you're correct yeah. with that, and Jerome did get sixth. Okay. Um, so you were able to name the full top six. You were right about that full podium, by the way. Um, <laughs> so there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, now I think you guys can sort of see what I mean when I say Stanley is a, a, a walking WCA database. Um, <laughs> you're two for three so far. Uh, we'll see how you're able to do with this fourth question. Uh, like I said, they should be getting progressively harder. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. This fourth question comes from Albert Yu, also known as Cubix. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Uh, so yeah, take it away, Cubix. Up until Felix Zemdijk started competing, who was the only person to receive the same 3x3 world record time twice. A. Eric Akersdijk B. Yu Nakajima C. Shitaro Makisumi or D. Ron Van Bruchen Okay, you're good to go, Stanley. Okay. So, uh, for, for this question, the one person who comes to mind immediately is Yu Nakajima, who got... 8.72 twice in uh, different rounds of Kashiwa Open 2008, I believe was the competition. Um, but yes, um, yeah, it's interesting. He, it was the same competition. I believe it was a one-day competition as well, which shows the you know how the WCA regs change over time. But BU Nakajima mm. is my final answer. That is correct. You got the time, you got the comp, you got the person. That is it. <laughs> so you are three for four so far. That's so impressive. I wonder how people in the chat are doing, if anybody's gone four for four yet. But... I don't know. That's, yeah, very impressive. Very impressive. You've got three out of four. Moving on to question five, which comes from Avocado or hashtag Cuber. Let's see if she can fool you. At World Championships 2013, three different European Cubers broke an ER or multiple ERs. Which of the following Cubers did not break a European record? And world records don't count. A, Sebastian Bayer. B, Bense Badat. C, Jacob Kipa. Or D, Michal Hauzuk. Am I good to go? Yeah, you're good now. Okay. Um, okay. So let me just read, finish reading this question real quick. Okay. So Worlds 2013, I'm trying to think of who I can be sure about with like breaking an ER. So all of these people have broken ERs at some point. I know that for sure. Um, you know, um, these are all, but the one name that stands out, especially for like that age, I believe is uh, Ben Barat. He seems like the kind of person who would have gotten way more world records than ERs. Um, mm. And, you know, as the question says, world records don't count. But I'm trying to think. Jakub Kipa, he... See, the interesting thing about it being 2013 is he could have done it for either 3x3 three three or uh, feet. Because um, he, he was quite the fast boy in 3x3 three three at one <laughs> point. Um, in fact, he still is. Um, but yeah, this is actually quite difficult. Um, mm. just thinking about like the, just the difference between like world record and ER actually, no, come to think of it. I believe Ben say Barak got a seven by seven ER at that competition. Um, Jakub Kipa, I'm still unsure about, but I, I think Mikhail would have also gotten a big QBR. <laughs> this is, wow. <laughs> this, is, this is a really difficult question. Wow. I, I may have to, I may just have to like. So the one person I haven't talked about yet is Sebastian Sebastian Weyer. I know he mm. podiumed three by three at that competition, but it was behind another European, so he definitely did not get ER in three by three average in finals at the very least. Mm. Um, Who was that just, European? What? Uh, Who Mats was Volk. that European? It, it was Mats Volk. Um, uh -huh. You know, uh, he he got sub eight average along with Felix, who won, and you know Seb got third with I believe it was a low eight, like eight fourteen or some eight oh six actually. Eight oh six is my guess for that um i may just have to guess a sebastian fire final answer that's your final answer all right this yeah. was a tricky one for you it seems like a lot of yeah. a lot of guesswork but educated guesswork how confident mm -hmm. would you say you are in sebastian fire about a five out of seven five out of seven yes. yeah i mean that's that should be a seven out of seven that is correct well it's a perfect <laughs> five out of seven so yeah yeah perfect five out of seven that puts you at four for five so far um you got most of the things you said right uh uh, Bense Barat did get a 7x7 ER average and single. 
Okay. Uh, Mikal did get single as well, but it was later beaten by Bense anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Kipa got a feet ER average. Um, Sebastian's uh, podium average was an 886, though, not 806. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Nobody so baited yeah. at that comp. Uh, Felix oh, won with an 88. right. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I'm thinking of Jakub Kipa's third place 2015 average, maybe. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Well, you're four for five so far. The only one you've missed is the first one, which is surprising because that was <laughs> expected to be one of the yeah. easier ones. But yeah. All right, cool. Um, moving on, our sixth question comes from Phil Yu of The Cubicle. So take it away, Phil. Hey, Stanley. I have a question for you. Zhuang Haiyan, famous for his blind accomplishments, set his first blind world record single in mid-2009. Since this record, how many seconds did he improve his own world record single? A, 16.28, B, 17.09, C, 17.99, or D, 18.21? You're good now. Um, all right, so, okay, this is about Haiyan. Mm -hmm. So... So as so these rough estimations are not going to help me a lot here, but I know um, I believe his his world records took him from about fifty eight to thirty one, or was it fifty seven to thirty one? <laughs> <laughs> that would be important. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be quite an important detail. Crucial. Um, <laughs> actually, no. I I think his I I think his first world record was like it was like a mid fifty eight. Okay. I'm not absolutely certain on this, but I have to, I have to, you know, just take the information I have and sort of just, yeah. Um, and then his last world record was 30, it was either a 30 or a 31. Or was it a mm. 32? <laughs> that's not good. Um, that's, that's not helpful. Um, yeah. Ooh. The stumper. So I'm, okay, I'm going to, Okay, I'm going 5844 sounds right for what his first world record is. I have no confidence in that, but I'm going to like actually just subtract these amounts and see which one feels the most right. Okay. So okay, 3135 does not sound right. Um 30.45 is definitely not right. So it's not C or D, I don't think. So it's either A or B. Minus 16.28 from that would be 32.16. I'm going to guess B, 17.09, final answer. That's your final answer, 17.09? Yeah. This is a tricky one. The answers were very close, too. Yeah. <laughs> so estimation is uh, is pretty tricky here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's A, 16.28. Ah. Yeah. Um, so his first world record was actually 47.22. Oh, wow. Um, That's a lot faster than I expected. And also, yeah. I was subtracting by 26 and 27 each time. I did not even mm. catch that. That was a... <laughs> yeah. That was that was not a, a math that was that was that was a forty IQ move from me. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, his first world record was a forty-seven twenty-two, and his last one was a thirty point nine four. Okay, um, he did have a thirty-two world record as well, thirty-two twenty-seven. Yeah, um, yeah. His first record was a one hundred one, which was NR, and then he got I, another I, I NR. Think, I I think the fifty-eight record that I was thinking was was the one before high end, which was probably by Yu Hui Shu. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to check that, but um, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so I mean, so far you've got four out of six. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Um, but just just remember, they get harder as we go on. Yeah, so we'll this, this, this one was not kind to me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, even if you can get half, these are still pretty tricky questions. Yeah. So we'll see if you're able to pull off five at least. Uh, but yeah, this, one, yeah, I just need one yeah. more to get half. Yeah, only one more. Uh, so let's see if you can get this one from Sean Belke or Uber Cuber. Uh, take it away, Sean. Hey everyone, this is Sean, or Ubercuber. My question for Stanley is, which former 3x3 world record holder is ranked 9th on the WCA's list of most countries competed in? A. Eric Ackersdijk B. Yunak Jima C. Mats Valk or D. Ron Van Brukem Okay, there's your question. Okay. So ninth on the list of most countries competed. So Correct. I know it is not Ron because he is at the very least on the podium, if not at the top, because he is, I believe, at least 40 countries, which is mm -hmm. quite impressive. You know, as a delegate, you know, more than anything, he really does like do first competitions in countries quite a lot. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yu Nakajima does not strike me as a person who would travel a ton for competitions. First of all, because he stopped competing in 2015. And second of all, because, um, you know, he's uh, in Japan. He's probably mostly traveled for world championships and stuff. Um, mm. Eric, so that leaves Eric and Mots as the two people that I'm considering the most. And I'm leaning towards Mots because, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a lot of recent notoriety. Um, he's got uh, good sponsors. And he's been to places, you know, he, he's, you might have seen videos from him from, like, competitions like Kazakhstan and South Africa. Um, mm. You know, his 474 was in Indonesia, Jawa Timur Open 2016. <laughs> so I'm going to guess Matsvalk, uh, CE Matsvalk, final answer. Matsvalk is your final answer? Yeah. Any guess on how many countries you think he's been to? <sighs> 23. 23, interesting. All right, um, unfortunately, it was Eric. Oh, uh, okay. so very close. The two of them were super close too. Sean really tried to get you with this one. Eric has mm. been to 25 countries and Mats has been to 26. Oh, uh, so okay. Mats is tied for seventh um, mm. and Eric is tied for ninth with uh, three other uh, competitors. But yeah, so that was a pretty close one. Pretty evil answer choices there too on Sean's part. But uh, yeah, Sean got you. Congrats to Sean on that one. Um, and question number eight, I have... Uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how you'll do on this one, to see uh, your thought process. It comes from Adam Vetzer from the Rubik's Cubed. Um, we all know and love him. Let's see what Adam's got for you. Take it away, Adam. Manly Chapel, wielder of scalpel, blindfolded guardian of trivia truth. You may have conquered my previous general trivia, but riddle me this. What is the sum of Yu Nakajima's WCID numbers? Felix's world ranking in three blind, and Jaden McNeil's number of gold medals. Is it A, 2,521, B, 2,422, C, 2,321, or D, 2,223? Okay. You're good to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We got a so we got a good old uh, math question. Yeah. So, so a little hey, clarification here. Um, yeah. This won't make a huge difference, but when he says Unakajima's WCAID numbers, he's he referring means, to the first yeah. one and the second one. Yeah. So he means so, two thousand seven plus oh one, so two thousand eight. Um, I can't they, confirm or deny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Felix, I know he has a, approximately a thirty four single, probably like a. I think he has like a one minute mean though, and I'm trying to think like what that would even rank him. Mm. Cause honestly, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. We should um clarify that, yeah, this is three blinds mean that is yeah. the uh the ranking. Also, for people in the chat, uh the question is up top, I believe. Oh, it's um not mm. oh, it is updated. Yeah. The question is up top on stream for you guys. Yeah. Um but yeah. Also, yeah. um also quick side note, I appreciate how the uh answer choices are form an arithmetic sequence. Or no, they don't. They <laughs> almost form an arithmetic sequence. That's pretty they almost do. <laughs> That's so infuriating. That's so infuriating. Mm. <laughs> 23, 23, and 22, 24 should have been the last two answers. Mm. <laughs> so um, does that mean you think those aren't the answers then? No, it does not. That makes <laughs> that act, if anything, that makes me more biased towards those answers, but I'm not going to consider that because that's the kind of thing that Adam would do to try to psych me out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me your thought process for this. You have, okay. you figured out. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fairly sure I have Unakajima's ID numbers, although I could be one off with the second ID number. Uh, mm -hmm. You never know, but that wouldn't make a difference because these answers all differ by the hundred, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I can essentially estimate like, so Unakajima 2000, Jane McNeil gold medals. I'm going to guess about 150. I, I, have no clue but 150 <laughs> um maybe like 168 or something then felix's <laughs> world ranking i'm just trying to think about what would make the most sense and it seems like that would be b 24 22 24 22 seems like it yeah. makes the most sense what are you yeah. thinking for felix's ranking just curious <sighs> seems like about 250 or so okay interesting though. all right so you're locking in b 24 yeah. 22 final answer yeah sure that is correct. Okay. You got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So Yu Nakajima's WCI ID is actually 2007 NAKA 03. Oh, So wow. very close okay. there. Not that it makes a huge difference, like you said. Yeah, um, I was, I, like I was saying 01 because there were, like, no cubers in 2007. So. Fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently there were a lot of uh, Naka cubers, though. So 
Um, but yeah, Felix's blind mean ranking is 195th, and Jay okay. has 217 gold uh, medals. I'm so, sorry, you Jay. Know, you, were, you ballparked it pretty close. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, nice. So you got you got five out of eight so far. Pretty good. Um, so let's see if you can uh, get the perfect seven out of ten here. We've got two left. Um, <laughs> this next question comes from uh, our very own Daniel Carnock or Derpy Cuber. So take it away, Derpy. So in speed cubing, there's a very small group of people that have won an event at a World Championships more than once. So out of these four people, which one of these has not done that? Simon Westland. Lars Vandenberg, Eric Ackersdijk, or Ryan Patricio? Okay, there's your question. All right, so out of these four people, who has not won a world championship title more than once? Okay, Correct. so Lars Vandenberg, I can with absolute certainty say he has because he won 2003 and 2005 in square one. Ryan Patricio won 2005 and 2007 OH. Simon Westland, I'm not entirely sure. He won 2011 Mega Minx. I don't think he either won. Two, I know he or Otter won 2013, but I can't. Um, I can't say for certain. Um, Twenty. I'm trying to think of who won in 2015 to try and help me out a little bit because it was not Juan Pablo that year. Mm. It might have been Otter that mm. year, and then Simon Westland would have gotten it. Eric Ackersdijk, I do, I cannot think of two world's wins he's gotten, um, but I can like almost for Simon, so I think I'll have to go with Eric Ackersdijk. Final answer. Eric Ackersdijk is your final answer. Can you think of any uh, world world championship podiums that or wins that Eric has gotten? Uh, at the moment, no, I cannot actually. Hmm. Interesting. Well. I will say that most of your intuition was correct. Um, you got like pretty much all of the things you said about all the other world championships uh, that people have won. And you're also correct about Eric. He has won mm -hmm. one world championship in Megaminx in 2007. Oh, that's um, right. Now yeah, remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got a lot of a lot of um, Megaminx going on in this one. But yeah, yes. that's that was super impressive. <laughs> well done on that one. Um, so you're, you're six out of nine so far. Very nice. Um, <laughs> and finally, for the perfect seven out of ten, um, we're going to be uh, giving this one to Jesse Hartnett, or J.R. Cuber, an absolute YouTube legend. Uh, and we'll see. I think this is one of the hardest questions we've got for you. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, take it away, Jesse. Hey, Stanley. Here is my question. Sebastian Oru, who has completed the most amount of official WCA solves, has DNF'd how many of them? A, 438, B, 211, C, 703, or D, 615. Thanks. Okay, there's your question. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Keep and in mind. I may sorry, ask for a quick words. clarification. Yeah, ask Yeah, ask away. Um, for multi-blind, um, mm -hmm. do... Do, does every DNF cube count as a DNF, or is this like official counted DNFs? This is official counted DNFs. Okay. And so to clarify for the viewers, because um, I don't think Jesse said this in the video, DNSs do not count, DNFs only count, and old events do count. So events like feet, um, multi-blind old style, those count. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so so for the first thing I'm trying to think about is how many competitions has he gone to? And the the best estimate I can give is about 200, which doesn't really help me. Um, but one thing that that makes me almost certainly rule out 211 because one DNF per competition is really low, especially for someone who you know competes in blind events um, mm. and has done magics in the past, and uh, you know. Also, he's also an FMC legend. He probably doesn't DNF that a lot because of how good he is at the event. But mm. you know, you never know. He could. That always is a source that could happen. Yeah. But but this draws me to C and D because D would imply you know you're DNFing out of a round of big blind per competition, which is very feasible. You know, you could spread those DNFs out around different things as well if you wanted to. Um, Overall, this seems like more of a guesswork question again. So I'm going to say D615, final answer. 
D615 is your final answer. All right. So um, C. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things he said were really on point. He's been to 208 competitions. So okay. uh, amazing guesswork there. And yeah, he is obviously very good at FMC. Uh, and he does do like every event. So he's going to be competing in a lot of stuff at every competition. Um, and I am sorry to say to Jesse that he did not fool you. That is correct. <laughs> 615 right, is the correct answer. <laughs> um, congrats on that. So we had three foolers. Um, I believe they were. Um, oh, Phil is this another trivia question? And, they were... <laughs> oh, who were? Yeah, who were the, who were the three they people were, who fooled you? They were Felix Zemdegs, Phil Yu, and Sean Belke. There we go. Yep. Felix Zemdegs, Phil Yu, and Sean Belke. Congrats on fooling Stanley Chapel. To the rest of you, better luck next time. Hopefully, we'll do this again in the future. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Stanley, for uh, doing this with us. It was really fun. Yeah, of course. That's on great 7 time. out of 10. Yeah, yeah 70% you. on some of the hardest WCA trivia questions we have to offer is pretty dang good. So, congrats. <laughs>